Eric Darling here with Darling Data, <clears throat> and uh, well, been been huffing again, which means it's time for some office hours. Uh, I will answer five of your questions that you submit through this link right here, right? This this beauty, which is down in the video description. Uh, speaking of the video description, if you would, if you would like to become a member, a paying member of this channel to support my efforts uh, to bring you all this wonderful, high-quality SQL Server content, uh, you can sign up for a membership in the exact same place. I don't know why this thing has me turning so pink right now. It's, it's a little unsettling. I am not normally radiation poisoning red, but I don't know. Maybe it's just how I feel inside. Uh, if, if you do not care that much about me um, with, with money, you can like, you can comment, you can subscribe, and you can ask me questions for these here episodes. Uh, of office hours, which is always, always a highlight. Uh, if you need help from a SQL Server consultant, I am one of them, one of one of too many. I think uh, now when I look around LinkedIn, it is absolutely saturated with with idiots who have expert in their their LinkedIn profile, and and then you see the things that they say and they write about, and you like uh, you. You, 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 you wish that you could bring back firing squads. As none of them would make it. Uh, if you need help with SQL Server, health checks, performance analysis, hands-on tuning of your SQL Server workloads, uh, responding to SQL Server performance emergencies, and of course, training your developers so that you don't have those anymore and you can go back to drinking or huffing compressed air in peace, I'm available. And as always, my rates are reasonable. Uh, if you would like some performance tuning content from me, I have 24 hours of it available with the discount code. It's about 150 bucks, uh, and uh, that's pretty good. That, 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 that 150 bucks will last you the rest of your life. So you, good, good for you if you choose to look that for, far into the future. Right? Bet, bet, you, bet you have a 401k or something. Kid. Right? You're a real, real whiz kid. Uh, I, of course, have a new course coming out. Learn T SQL with Eric. That's me. That's that's Eric right there. Uh, this this, this fella. Uh, all this content is being recorded leading up to uh, Kendra and I doing our past precons. So attendees to those will get access to all of this for as, as part of their admission. You buy tickets. You you come. You get access. Uh, the course is available now for everyone else for a pre-sale price of 250 bucks. That will go up to 500 bucks when everything is said and done. Uh, the videos will start dropping shortly. Well, actually, this is going out after May 10th. So videos will have already started dropping by the time this thing this thing sees the light of day. Uh, I record the, the office hours ahead of time and schedule them for every Monday. So that's why sometimes the dates are a little funky on these. So I apologize, but... Uh, it would be a lot of work to, to fix that. So we're not going to do it. Uh, I did manage to fix this slide, though, because New York SQL Saturday will have already happened. So that we no, no longer need to talk about that. But we still do need to talk about PASS being on tour oh, this summer. Uh, New York City, August 18th to 20th. Dallas, September 15th to 17th. And Amsterdam, October 1st to 3rd. Of course, all of that is leading up to it's just warming us up, getting us nice and loose and limber and get the blood flowing and the muscles in order for past data community summit in seattle november 17th to 21st so we'll, we'll be doing all, all as much as much as we humanly possibly can to do all that but with that out of the way let's answer some questions here on this office hours uh, episode oh we got we got some long ones in here boy oh boy oh boy y'all like typing so much all right uh i work for a small startup seven pipples Three on SQL Server, including the boss. That's a mistake. Never let your boss use SQL Server. Uh, our software is a complex ERP system with business logic heavily implemented on SQL Server. We are planning to move to Postgres. Is Postgres a good platform for complex business logic and performance? Uh, I don't know. I don't use Postgres. Um, but what I can tell you is the number of people who have said the exact same thing to me. We're going to move to Postgres. I, one of my oldest clients, uh, I started this consultancy in 2019. Uh, I have had a consultant since uh, April, no, March of 2019 uh, to today, who back in 2019 said, we're going to be on Postgres in six to eight months. You know where they're not? 
Postgres. Uh, if you want to dip your toes in it, try moving some little pieces of it over to Postgres. See how it goes. See how it handles whatever tiny little bits of logic you have. Maybe it'll go well. Maybe it'll go not well. But um, if, you, if your idea is to just move the whole thing over, well, I will see you in six to eight months. <laughs> you goofballs. Where do you get this stuff from? Uh, boy, oh boy. Uh, oh, that's the wrong, that's the wrong zoom it option. Oh, hey, Eric. Hey, how you doing? Uh, what deciding factors should be considered when marking an entire table for update statistics? Is it based on how fast the data changes or is it okay to run the update statistics overnight irrespective? Um, oh gosh, uh, are you... <laughs> So like when, when you, the reasons to update statistics, you know, uh, you got a table that's, you know, maybe sees a lot of modifications, maybe the statistics uh, fall out of date pretty quickly. Um, you know, the, the big thing that I, I, I need to tell everyone about update stats is, you know, the update stats isn't generally there to help you with like data that already was in the stats histogram that's changed. Usually the beauty of update stats is to get new data into the histogram that is not currently represented in it. So if you are constantly adding new data to the table, then uh, I think it is a good idea to update your statistics for that table so that you don't have to deal with any off histogram uh, searches against your table that, that might not have any representation. It might get you a pretty bad cardinality estimate. Uh, so, so yes, up, update your statistics, but you know, um, you know, the overnight is fine, but I, I've worked in some environments where we had to update stats way more often than that. And some other environments where not only did we have to update stats way more frequently than overnight, like every hour, half hour or so, uh, we also had to uh, do it at a very specific sampling percent in order to get a good histogram for things. So, uh, you know, you, you, you might find that the overnight, just the overnight stats update is not enough. Don't be afraid to update your stats more often. All right. Uh, it's hard to tell where this one ends. That's a lot of writing. All right. Uh, hi, Eric. Hello. I have weight type SOS scheduler yield, which is way higher than second one. Uh, SOS scheduler yield is 75 hours of 230 hours. Page Lodge SH is five hours total. Should I focus mostly on CPU intensive queries? Or should or, or this can be connected also with high CPU ready time on VM side. Uh, so you're, you're going in a few different directions here, and uh, it seems like you're doing a lot of analysis, but not of actual not not a lot of actual fixing of things. Uh, you, I, I think you are generally right that that you should you should be tuning CPU intensive queries. What what I'm concerned about here though uh, are, are a couple things. Uh, one, uh, you have that much SOS scheduler yield, uh, and which 75 hours, and <clears throat> then you, the next weight down is page latch SH at five hours. There's no real mention of like CX weights, like CX packet, consumer, like any of those. So I'm concerned that you may, may have max stop set to one, or you may have uh, either at the server or database level, uh, perhaps you have cost threshold for parallelism set to whatever the high value for that is. Uh, or maybe you have just a crap ton of scalar UDFs uh, that force your entire query to run single threaded. Um, so if I were, if I, if it were me looking at your server, first I would be trying to figure out where's all the parallelism, because it doesn't seem like you have any, uh, at least not that you mentioned. Uh, maybe there are some, you know, like background tasks that are, are eligible for parallelism that, uh, that don't bring it up past the five hour mark in 230 hours of uptime, which would be interesting. But uh, that would be my main concern, uh, is why you're not getting any parallel queries on this. Um, and, you know, I don't even know if that's a thing for SharePoint anymore, to be honest with you. But like besides that, uh, yeah, I mean, like generally, uh, yes, I would go after CPU uh, I would go after queries that have the highest CPU uh, on here, and I would also uh, would also look at queries that have a um, very high execution frequency. 
Um, so you could use SP Quickie Store to look both by average CPU uh, or by executions. Um, that would give you a pretty good, some pretty good insight into both the stuff that ex that takes a long time when it runs, and the stuff that like like uses a lot of like ch very choppy CPU, right? Uh, things like scalar UDFs would be especially prone to that, especially because you know like they don't run once per query, they run once per row that they have to process, which leads to a lot of additional scheduling. Um, I would also potentially, maybe not like very very concerned, but I would also maybe be a little worried that your that you don't have a lot of CPUs on this thing and maybe queries might be waiting uh, a long time to get CPU attention that would tie into like the high CPU ready time on the VM side potentially but um, you know that that's 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 more than I can dig into with the, with the text you've given me uh, in general I wouldn't add more observerness to this I wouldn't start logging more stuff I would just start going after meaningful queries that like either like run and take a long time or run a lot that you know like again scalar UDFs loops cursors like loops and cursors in scalar UDFs stuff like that I would, there's a lot of things that I would go after there all right next question uh, I see Brent is going to put AI in his procedures are you plan on doing that too um so no, um, and so like, you know, the, the AI is, a, or LLMs, whatever, however, however you wish to refer to it, they're always an interesting topic. Um, you know, it's, so you don't really want to watch where the ball is. You want to watch where the ball's going, right? It's not like, just because things are like, not great now, <laughs> doesn't mean that they won't be great down the line. You know, uh, AI and LLMs, they are constantly improving, but we as humans tend to stay relatively the same. We don't make like big leaps and bounds uh, in, in our abilities uh, very quickly. Um, and also, you know, um, uh, when you think about like a lot of stuff that is like really fundamentally changed the way that humans interact with the world around them, uh, like just, you know, technology wide, the technology side, you know, uh, cars were invented, but it was a long time before cars were widespread. Um, you know, uh, PCs were invented, but it was a long time before everyone had a PC, never mind a, a PC sitting in their pocket, right? Like cell phones. Um, then, you know, uh, the internet was in, around for a long, long time before everyone's house was wired with internet and we have satellite space internet now. So like, like AI, like for whatever it is now, like, like maybe like down the line, like there's gonna there's gonna be a lapse between like you know the current hype cycle of everything AI all the time and you know like like what it actually ends up like how it ends up how how it actually ends up becoming a part of our lives. Who knows? But like um, for me personally, uh, putting AI into this stuff doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, I, like. And, you know, and like it would be highly speculative for me to say this, but like I, I, I saw the, the Brent's post about him doing it. It, it only makes it would only make sense to do that if I were planning on releasing my own like Eric Darling SQL Server agent that would and that would like you would pay me to answer questions for you from these things. Right? Like that's the only way it would make sense for me to do it. I don't know. I don't know if Brent's doing that. I don't know if that's his plan. Just because, like, like right now, it's like, like think about like most people's usage of LLMs, right? Like Copilot's going to be an SSMS, right? So like like whatever results you get from an SSMS query, it's not a far trip to Copilot. Whatever results come back, whether it's you know query plans or indexes or whatever, uh, most people will have like have access to an LLM sitting next to them, right? So it's like you know you could like you could copy something from SSMS, put it in a browser tab. So like like it doesn't it doesn't make sense like from like for me to build anything into it that seems like if someone wants to take those results and do something with them in an LLM, it's not a very long trip for them to do that on their own. So like I don't have any plans of like creating or introducing my own AI agent yaki mouth thing. So like I wouldn't build anything into mine unless there was a way for that to like there's a lot of work, right? Like the like the security and figuring all that out like bleh. A lot of work on that side. So I wouldn't necessarily do that unless it were going to be like a profitable venture for me. So maybe Brent has something figured out that I don't. Uh, if it has to do with marketing, he probably does. There's a 99% chance that he's far ahead on that. But uh, for me, I, I can't see a lot of upside to putting that into uh, my procedures in the, at least, at least in the, as things currently stand with, 
with me and my life. All right, so uh, last question here. Why would I use dynamic SQL to defeat parameter sensitivity when I can just use optimize for? Well, uh, I, I mean, it's, you can, I'm not, I'm not sure why you're asking me this. Um, it's, it's a bit silly. Uh, if, if you can figure out a way to um, get your parameter sensitivity problems fixed with just using optimize for, go for it. Uh, the reason why I present the options that I do is because perhaps there are situations where optimize for does not solve your parameter sensitivity issues. Perhaps it just gives you um, one big plan that happens to make you happy in the moment. I don't know. Uh, you also left off what you're optimizing for. If you're going to say unknown, I'm going to come to your house and I'm going to perch on your bedpost and stare at you while you sleep because uh, that's, that's, that's a nightmare um, and you deserve nightmares for what you do to SQL Server. If you're optimizing for specific values, that can certainly work. Uh, I've, I've done it in the past, but um, using dynamic SQL to fix parameter sensitivity issues is a good tool to have around just in case any of that stuff doesn't work. And if, you, if, you've, if you're talking about my uh, defeating parameter sensitivity with dynamic SQL video, uh, one of, one of the, the, the methods that I use in there actually does use a dynamic optimize for. So, um, there, you, you can combine both of those into one big happy family of, of stuff to do. So uh, if, you can, if you can get away with optimizing for some values and fixing parameter sensitivity, great. You can stop right there. If you run into a problem that optimize for doesn't solve, then you, you might need to reach a little deeper into your old tool bag. Maybe, maybe even down into the dynamic SQL pocket and do a little bit more typing. Anyway, that's it for today. That was all five questions. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. And I will see you in the next office hours. Oh, and, and also the next video and so on and so forth into, into, into eternity. All right. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. There's the button. There we go. All right. Now, now, now. All right. We'll do that one more time so I don't stick to landing. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.